Good afternoon. Uh, I'm recording this video after uh, some pause. So, and I was not recording videos for some time. It's been a few weeks actually. So, during this one, uh, I was working on a project uh, where I had to do some uh, BNG services, BRAS, where the, the customers are trying to connect to an ISP where they get uh, uh, the internet service from an internet service provider. Uh, so in, in this setup, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, first of all, we should know that what are the components of uh, this setup working here. So in here, I've got some users uh, which will be trying to get DHCP IP addresses. Here is a switch. Uh, it is a router which is enabled for the BNG services or the BRAS services, so to say. Uh, I have got a Linux server which is working as a DHCP. In here, I've configured a, uh, a CentOS server which is configured as RADIUS, but in this video, I'm not going to talk about RADIUS. So, in here, we'll, we'll just be talking about uh, a smaller ISP setup where users are getting DHCP IP addresses from uh, uh, ISP so, uh, router and uh, that router is actually sending out the DHCP requests coming from the users to an external server and uh, relaying back the, uh, the, the IP addresses. So uh, let's uh, start with showing you some configs. So here we are. I bring in the item application here. I hope uh, the view is still good for you. So in here, the 192.168.12.53 is the IP address of our router. So first of all, I'll show you the version. It's a VMX 19.04 and licensing is really important. I got uh, the uh, VBNG Elite tier. It's a demo license. So definitely you will need licensing to do this job. Actually, I, 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 I was struggling to do this uh, setup. Uh, the, the configuration was good, but I mean, th there was nothing showing on the outputs, and I, I was pretty uh, disappointed that why this thing is not working. And then uh, someone told me that you must need a license, and as soon as I applied the license, everything became like magic. Okay, so uh, this is our connection to the router, uh, sorry, the DCP server. Okay, so uh, everything is pre-configured pre just to keep the video short. I'll go back to the router. So first of all, the, the integration or, or, or the building blocks of uh, uh, an ISP kind of setup is that you have something called dynamic profiles. One is for the VLANs and one is for the IPs. And you call these dynamic profiles on the interface which is connecting towards the uh, incoming traffic of the users where they, they want to get the IP addresses. So this is the uh, configuration of the interface. And then because I told we are doing a DHCP relay, the, the DHCP request is going out. So for that one, uh, show configuration forwarding options and DHCP relay. So this configuration is for the DHCP relay. Basically in here, the DHCP IP address is 10, 100, 100, 
and the interface with where it needs to process the DHCP request is G001. It will override option 82 and the option 82 it will pick up the circuit ID and in the circuit ID it will just pick VLAN ID. So that's the whole thing. And uh, for the authentication it's going to pick up the VLAN tags only. So these three are the building blocks and uh, just one more thing is there show configuration access profile so this is here uh, I've not gone for the authentication as I told that in this video will not be going to look for the uh, radius server so that's it and here is the the QFX in here you got uh, XC006 it's a, it's a trunk allow VLAN all and in, in these interfaces you it's VLAN 1011 and there is another VLAN 2500 so it's just that much so show interface XC006 display set so it's a trunk and show interface XC001 display set it's to VLAN 11 uh, 2 is VLAN 12 5 is again VLAN 12 and say maybe 4 is VLAN 10 so basically it's it's just a bunch of ports going to different VLANs the concept is if you just want to visualize that there, there will be a set of users coming from a certain VLAN number. There, there could be 500 users, there could be 254 users, like a one, one subnet. And they should be getting addresses from a certain IP range based on the VLAN tag. This is the requirement. And that's what we have tried to do in here. If you again go and look for the DHCP relay configuration, so it says that bring in the VLAN tags, override the option 82 and in the option 82 send out a VLAN tag and uh, yeah here I'll show you the configuration of the DCP server. It's a CentOS machine. And uh, in this CentOS machine, we have installed uh, uh, the the DHCP server. And I'll show you the configuration. Uh, cat at C uh, DHCP DHCP D dot conf. So basically what's happening that look here this one line actually it it uh, made a lot of trouble for me I was able to get the HCP IP addresses but just from one uh, subnet not from all the subnets so this line it it, it made the magic magic effect the rest are the uh, standard inputs so first of all we have to define a subnet which is from the range where the the IP address of the DCP server is you can keep this this range empty but such a range must be defined if I do say if config you can say that the IP address is from this range. So for example, if in the configuration of this server, I do not define uh, this subnet, in that case, this server configuration will not work. So what I've done is that I defined a, a shared network. And in this one, 
I have defined different subnets. Subnet 10, subnet 20, subnet 30. And uh, obviously this subnet is the, the, the subnet of the DCP server itself and there is another subnet of 10 to 50. And then I define a class. In this class it is matching the option of a circuit ID and if a value of 10 is coming, assign it a subnet of 10, 10. And then there are the standard DHCP options, what you, what you do in the Windows DHCP server, you give it a gateway, you give it a uh, domain name. Then I look for, uh, this particular thing could be anything but the actual value is here. So it's looking for a tag of 11 and give it a range of 10, 10, 20. It's looking for a VLAN tag of 12 and giving a range of 10, 10, 30. Uh, looking for a tag of 2500 and giving it a IP range of 250. So that's the, the configuration of the DCP server. So if we go back here uh, to check basically if, if there are some users on the system. So that's we we have to say it's uh, show subscribers man i hope there is something and there is definitely something so we'll we'll have a look into to this command so dmux interface is obviously what we what we defined in there and it's based on the underlying interface in the underlying interface there are units of the interface which are coming from which are being formed dynamically as I told that from the switch we have got VLAN 12 coming in, we have got VLAN 10 coming in, we have got VLAN 11 coming in and we have got VLAN 2500 coming in and all these interfaces are created dynamically because it's a VMX router and we have got uh, the BNG licensing installed on top of it. That's the magic of this thing. So you can see that as per our DHCP server VLAN 11 should be 10, 10, 20. VLAN 2500 should be 10, 250. VLAN 10 should be 10, 10, 10. VLAN 12 should be 10, 10, 30. And uh, uh, in the front end, uh, basically I have got my home firewall. Uh, So, come on, <clears throat> I forgot the password, is it? I hope not, let me try another one. Cool. So uh, we we are logged into our firewall. That's my home firewall, which is actually connected to the internet. Uh, I'll say show interfaces terse match inet. So this G00 is connected to the internet, and uh, then there are different subnets connected to to my lab. And if I uh, say show route, so I'm defaulting to outside. Then I have got some static routes going towards my lab. So uh, that's how basically this particular net is actually connected to an interface on the firewall. So now uh, let's go to a machine. It's uh, so just to look again I'm, I'm going on the first machine connected to x001 so so I'll, I'll take it on a side and I'll try to bring up another machine also so that we can we can look at two machines on different networks able to access internet 
Okay, so I go to the first machine. If I do if config, so I'm getting an IP address from 10.10.20. 10, and if I do route minus N, so the gateway is 10.21. And there is another file, I believe. Cat etc. No, uh, I can't remember on top of my head where the DNS entries are. I go to the other machine. So if config, you see it's getting an IP address from 10, 10, 30 range route minus n so the gateway here yeah, it should be 10 10 30 maybe something is missing on the configuration file uh, so here if you can do ping 888 you're able to ping to 888 i'll close this machine we'll see another machine uh, here in the bottom so have a look here and obviously we'll check about the internet also browsing the internet oh I'll say start a new session bbc.co.uk I go to the other machine if config that's on 20 again uh, ping it, 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 it. I'll close this one we go to the last one So, so here you have got an address from the range of 250. Your gateway is 10 to 50, So the other, for the other machine, I think on VLAN 12, uh, there was something wrong on the configuration on the server side. So you have got access to internet. The machines are getting IP addresses from the different ranges. There may be some small knobs to be uh, set up, but this is the uh, whole thing. Uh, like how a small ISP is uh, configured and. Uh, uh, the DHCPs are the, the DHCP requests are forwarded out to uh, uh, to a external server, and the IPs are dispersed. So if I come back, I say show DHCP relay bindings. So these are the bindings which are happening at the moment. and uh, that's it thanks a lot for sparing time to watch this video